welcome to day 43 of the 90 day novel challenge. My name is Brad Paquette and I hope that you had a great rest day yesterday. I hope that you allowed your mind to recuperate so that you are ready to dig into six new days of novel writing this week. Today, I want to talk about the philosophical conflict. So the philosophical conflict is basically the idea that your protagonist is trapped between two opposing worldviews and they have to sort it out. So I explore this in greater detail in chapters 5 and 11 in the Novel Matrix book, as well as in the Novel Matrix classes that are available from the company at writers.company. So I encourage you to go deeper on this topic because there's a lot more to be said than we're going to do in five minutes right here. Um, but again, the, the idea is that the protagonist is caught between two specific points of view so that as the protagonist is dealing with an external conflict, they're up against some sort of adversary and they're dealing with an internal conflict. They have two competing desires inside of their heart that they have to sort out. They are also trapped in this world in which they have to decide how they're going to view the world. Now, there are a number of ways that the philosophical conflict can make it to the page, but the most common are for the guide character and the frenemy character to represent one viewpoint each. So the guide is, is insisting that the protagonist look at the world in one such way, and the frenemy is insisting that the protagonist look at the world in another way. That's not always the case. Sometimes the protagonist already holds one view at the beginning of the story, and so they are one side of the philosophical conflict, but that's usually only true if the protagonist is going to change their perspective by the end of the story. But nonetheless, in one way or another, we have two characters that represent two opposing worldviews, and the protagonist is going to have to sort this out. One of the advantages of the novel matrix system, and what I want to encourage you to do today, is to make that philosophical conflict specific. So, of course, as you're writing a novel, and, and we've talked many times about how the novel kind of develops organically and you have space to, to let the characters become themselves on the page as you write the story, and that's very, very important. But it can sometimes create a barrier to effectively developing themes, values, and ideas that you want in your work because as characters, like human beings, we hold so many different ideas. And if we try to represent the complexity of every character in the book, then it's just going to be a, a, a horrendous storm of different ideas that are all competing and piling on top of each other. So the novel matrix system, by forcing you to define the philosophical conflict, forces you to make it specific. So while every character on the page is going to be complex and they're going to have their own ideas about how the world works and things like that, there are two specific ideas that you're going to spend time drawing into tension that you're really going to give more emphasis and page time than anything else. And that's going to allow your reader to one, attach to them, and then two, see how you resolve them, which is where you have the opportunity to present how you think the world ought to be. It's important that those ideas are specific. So, for instance, a philosophical conflict of Christianity versus Buddhism is way too wide of a topic to explore in a novel. You may be able to present two characters that sort of represent those ideas, but you're going to really struggle to give the reader a specific takeaway from the story. Instead, we need to present the philosophical conflict as two defensible ideas. You know, something like Christianity is just too broad. However, if my philosophical concept is Jesus is the only way to heaven versus your deeds cause you to reincarnate and potentially reach nirvana, those are two really specific ideas that now I can draw those into contest with each other. Now I can put those side by side. I can have the protagonist hear a case for one side and then in a different scene hear a case for the other side and have to choose between those two ideas based on you know their circumstances and their history and the data that we present in the story. So force yourself to get really, really specific on those philosophical ideas that are competing in the philosophical conflict. Again, that's where you're really going to, that's your pay dirt for values, themes, and you know, those kind of takeaway lessons that you want to give to your reader without overwhelming them. 
So when you define that philosophical conflict and you make it specifically, ironically, that gives you the tools that you need to embed it well into your scenes. But if you just have a hogwash of a bunch of different ideas and every character is complex and bringing different ideas to the page, then in order to promote any specific kind of takeaway or lesson from the story, you're going to have to just layer it on. You know, you're going to have to hit that thick to make sure that it rises above all the noise in the story. So by failing to define it, you're actually rendering yourself at the mercy of preachiness to get your point across. So as you're moving through the story and you're maybe, you know, 25,000 words into the story at this point, keep your eye out. Make sure that you're giving those characters that you've assigned philosophical ideas to make sure that you're giving them time to come forward on the page to present their case and to do it well so that you can effectively choose a winner and promote that to the reader and show them why one worldview is dominant above another. Keep your eye out for that. And of course, your assignment is to write for one hour today and to get 1,000 new words on the page. So get your butt in the seat. Keep your eye out for that philosophical conflict. And until I see you tomorrow, happy writing and be blessed. <laughs>